Go from a distance, from the outreach, and pull them. That's what they put in that lesson. Very good. They do like a more frizzy feel to the edges. You can see it just adds some nice little breakup, adding like a little thingy there. Most of the times, like the detailing, you don't really need to be too careful with how you put it in. You can see I'm just putting it really fast and sloppy. All that matters is that you have some form of detail in there just to break up the surface. You can be pretty messy with this. Again, this is all just breaking up the surface, adding some interesting parts. These bumps are definitely too strong though. Just gonna turn so after putting that in, and then just tone that down. I can see you don't really see it too clearly. But if we now turn it off and on, you can see it does add a nice little touch, which we want subtle nice touches. Let's see what else can we do. So I'm just looking at the reference and trying to spot some interesting detailing work that we can put in. I guess we can make this a little bit rougher. So let's inflate. about how strong the effect is. We have to on lace and we will tone it down. It's not the little piece that we should model. It's still on block out. I didn't pay attention to it. We'll do that a little bit later. Tension here and there. And again, it's really nice that we have this noise pattern because it doesn't really matter how it looks like, it's gonna blend in well with all the noise. So that's not all. Also get back to the ropes. Can skip that part. Just one more few things that I end more nicely. So if I just make a little piece, it's like actual rope. a little bit more noisy so I'm gonna make a layer just subside one time and 
Así que nada, se los tengo fuerza y noche. Pay attention to how that reads from distance. Again, it's more important that it doesn't look right from here than from here. Because this is how we will actually see it. See, it adds a little bit of noise. So we should definitely put more work in this piece. This is very strange. So I can only describe this piece as a living nightmare to make. <laughs> I think we're gonna stay away from that in the height. Then in the final asset we're gonna put some alpha cards to fresh everything up here. For now we do want to try to get some of that in the ropes. I think we can. Like this, snake cooling some up. So I think that will be the best. I'm gonna do it in ZBrush. Let's see. Push this out a little bit more. going maybe like this I'm gonna add a bunch of hair cards over here later start to actually subdivide so we get a little bit more control some trouble with the curvature here I'm trying to make it look nice now it's a little bit too steppy but I also want to be careful actually mm. it's not too bad I think like this looks okay just thicken this up a little bit looking I don't think I'm gonna add this it's gonna be a little bit too clustered with all the stuff that we already have going on let's go ahead and try to make the interior of this I'm gonna duplicate and be pretty careful with this because it's gonna be hard to get back by subdividing I prefer to reconstruct. I wish we could change the names of these, that'd be nice. So for this one, let's use the plugin solo folder. gonna hide everything except for the current folder I think that will be quite a useful workflow hiding everything with the plugin and then going between visibility sets you feel like we're missing some parts I think also sometimes it can be hard seeing which folder you are if you have these names like STL Nothing safe as well. That's why I like to hit uh, the folder button sometimes. This is just gonna match the names up to the actual folder. So if we like uh, in the middle, we can quickly see in which folder we're working.
so now that we can see easily in which one we're working let's go ahead and make the interior just gonna push this out a little bit see how low we can get so now you can see it's doing a proper job Should probably get rid of one of the edges just give it a little bit more breathing space this blur it and polish so we get a nice edge Anything we need them to be a little bit more. Let's try a quick polish. I don't think it will work, but nope. So we're gonna have to push that by hand. Let's get rid of some of this stuff. Dynamesh this, polish. Let's use this instead. And let's do our half. So we work with proper subdivisions. One more. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to put everything behind it. I'm going to add some nice breaker. From close up you can see that it doesn't really work. I think from a distance it works really well. So adding that nice rim that I like. much about what's happening there we're not really gonna have to pay attention to that because it's out of sight it's also important if something is not uh, in sight like people are not really gonna pay attention to it yeah you don't have to pay as much time to it you can if you like but that's the old one in this one so we can easily see the difference I can 
really clearly see the difference. Now one thing that's important, we need to prepare this thing for a retop. We're gonna retop this, this is gonna be a pain. Because we need something to fill this gap up here. So what I usually like to say, I like to append a cube. a few times let me check more less and it's like now we can get rid of this make sure we have a nice topology now we're gonna make sure it doesn't penetrate that's really important Thickness. Just like that. Now we're on the penetrations and sections are if you want to call it. Don't spend too much time on this, just try to get it done as fast as you can. This is just going to make your bake look uh, a lot more clean and polished. Instead of having like a really weird artifact because you're baking nothing down. If you left this as like a hole. Because we need to, need to take this right. And that porch is gonna be here, and then we do like an insert. That's gonna be a low. By just having something this piece can bake, it's gonna make your bake look a lot more. Let's apply this so we have a little bit more. What is it work with? Make sure this doesn't become like a layer that you see. Put this in mask. You can see that's useful to have these names match. So now I can just see here oh, this is the mask group instead of having to go up and checking hey, is that the folder? Don't have to fix it issues like this but I do like it to do it's quick and why not so now we can bake this whole mask down really properly and it's gonna be nice so let's put some stitches on the straps that we did as you can see they need some stitch work here One second. So one thing that you should probably do is I have this ZBrush brushes folding my projects. I should probably copy this and go to C startup and go to C brushes. And I'd like to add a custom one. So add a zero one to this, so it's always on top. 
then we can paste that folder in here with the stitches. So instead of having to exit the program by going brush load, we can just hit semicolon, brush, custom, stitches. We also get some previews. I think I'll go with bigger ones for these. Maybe 10. I think that works better for this kind of stitching. Double stitching looks like here. That looks nice. Gonna be lazy and just mirror stitches. Now in here we can add the stitching. Don't worry, an imperfect stitch is extra breakup. Let's duplicate this. So holding down control. Let's do another stitch like uh, where we have it. Like this over here. Seabrush is starting to get slow. Let's try to work as much in solo as you can and hide objects that you don't need to see. Because your Seabrush is also slow. I do feel like these are a little bit too big over here. I like how they look there, but. It's becoming a little bit too much. So let's try eight. It's important to generally try to keep your stitches the same size. But sometimes that just doesn't look nice on one part of the model for whatever reason. Maybe you already have a lot going on there. So then you can just kind of break the size. Maybe let's try the double stitch. Let's go ahead and mirror and weld. I 
I'm just uh, mirroring welding to get them on the other side as well, really fast. One thing that's important that we put the stitches without noise. Because this does uh, distort it a little bit. Remember imperfections, just add more breakup. So don't worry too much about it. It's one of my favorite lazy excuses that works. Now we can get that noise back. You can see this starting to look pretty nice and detailed. I do still think these are a little bit thick. Smooth them out to thin that. Nothing that's looking good. So next let's put a little bit more detail in this strap. And actually let's uh, break up this ladder a little bit first. As you can see it looks pretty perfect right now. And do this without symmetry. So with a really low intensity of standard, going over it. It's gonna add some subtle break in the reflections. Break that highlight up there. Mess around with the inflate a little bit. And suddenly break that symmetry up here. As you can see it's pretty flat here. Now if here it's it isn't as flat. So with the H polish we can flatten that out. And then smooth. I'm looking at the highlight, I don't like it. I think it looks better with when it's around it actually. And stray away a little bit from the reference to get a look that I like more. I think we did it a little bit too much here. Yeah. Start adding some breakup to these as well.
This one we can just do with symmetry, as you don't see them at the same time. And again, it's really easy, just add a little bit of stuff going on, and then add some impact. Just like that, we have a lot of these. You can see that's pretty minimal, but it does add that nice realistic look. It's just breaking it a, a little bit. So let's start working a little bit more on this piece. Let's do the same as we did with the other. First we start with getting that edge. Start adding noise. Just not doing anything. Just it inflate this a little bit. Let's figure out what's happening with the noise. I think this should do something interesting. I think that works really well. If we look at this, this looks kind of worn and frail and old. So does this now. See, makes quite a big difference. And added paste. I think that looks really nice. Let's break this up a little bit. thingies here and there like we did in the other one. And again, this is just gonna look, make it look more interesting. Now we have a little bit of a break up here instead of it all just being boring and flat. some at the edges as well. You can go a little bit more extreme with this strap as it looks more worn. Remember this so this surface noise we're not gonna bake it. It's just as a preview. Painter will do some actual fabric details. I think I want to add quite a extreme breakup in here, just to have it look more worn and more interesting. Change the shortcut of the snake hook, which is really annoying. Then again, we can add some uh, some alpha cards to make this more fussy, make this tail look better. Maybe it's a little bit strong. 
down. You can see how much that adds a little bit of edge damage. You can see how much more detailed it now looks as a whole. So now I'm just looking at this and I think over here it looks quite empty. Just take the damn standard and let's do some more edge damage. And I don't like using any fancy alpha brushes and all that stuff for most of my detailing work. I like to keep it very simple, just work with clay buildup, damn standard and all the other standard brushes we all love to use. Because we can go ahead and get like a fancy damage brush and track that alpha out, but it's just gonna take a little bit longer. This is a lot faster and it's gonna overcomplicate the process in my opinion. Because all that we really need is just some some little breakups here and there. And that works fine with the standard brushes we have. When I started learning ZBrush, I think that was really one thing that I messed up on. I was always looking through my brushes and uh, had like a whole bunch of them and I was looking for maybe 10 minutes for just a perfect brush to do a few edge damages. And in the end, it's just a lot of wasted time. But maybe it, it works better for you. Like if it works for you, using some fancy brushes, of course, feel free to do it. But for me, I noticed that I'm just spending too much time on it then. Especially with stuff like this, when you have a whole bunch of strong noise over it. Everything's just gonna kind of blend together anyway. That's what's wrong. So this is kind of my favorite stage of the, um, the modeling. Now it's just going over your model and kind of looking, hey, which part looks boring and why can I add little nice touch shots? Make it a little bit more interesting. Same here, just putting some damage on the edges to make it more interesting. You can see how how fake this looks, the straps we have here. And literally all that we have to do to fix that is take the standard brush. Go on a low, we should keep that lay actually. Go on a low intensity. Just doing this. Alt, don't use Alt, then switch in between the two. That's literally all it takes to, to make a nice looking leather strap. A really simple model, extracted and blah blah. Then just with a low intensity standard brush, go over it. And then in Painter, once we add some more details, and some more alpha details of lead in ZBrush, it's gonna look really nice and believable. And these little impact things add a lot as well. Something to always keep in mind that you have. Especially when you have like a buckle, kind of exaggerated so it reads better. See, I'm not thinking at all. Just going over it with a standard brush. Giving it simple folds. It's like the most easy thing ever. Anyone can do this. That gets back to the point I was talking about earlier with the fancy brushes. I think a lot of people tend to overcomplicate things. Just keep it nice and simple and add a little bit of variation in the height, and that's all you need. So if we take a look at the uh, before, you can see how much that pushes that surface. 
We literally just spent two minutes mindlessly going over it and that's all. And if you're going for a more worn used leather look, just go to the edges and kind of do some damn standard strokes here and there. Again, I'm not really thinking at this point. You can put a little bit more where the surface bends a lot. So, for example, here it would bend more, so we can put a little bit more damage. And these are my little favorites, just holding down Alt. And doing like a little thingy where the glue is letting loose. Again, you add those little damages at the edge to make it look more interesting where if it starts to get boring. Here we have a very long boring edge. So we just add a little bit of a clip in there and it looks more officially interesting. That's literally all there is to it. just kind of mess around with it you might think hey this looks uh, wrong like this a little bit that's sticking out but that's the thing that's going to make your sculpt look better just adds a bit of realism and wear For example, now it's very obvious that we have like a little thingy there. Now if we put all the colors, you can see that you can barely notice it because there's a lot more stuff to look at. And then if we put the textures and all that stuff, you're not even gonna notice it. But just by having stuff like that everywhere, it's gonna make the model look more believable. So if we take a look now, I think uh, it's starting to get pretty nice, but we've ignored the main part for a pretty long time now. So we're gonna put some details for the stitches and all. With that, I mean like a uh, comb here, just making this more rounded and all, and like getting some stitch lines in. So I'm gonna start with the uh, stitch lines. Take this all down. So the way we put stitch lines. What I mean exactly with that is just some indenting of where the stitch is. So I'm gonna take my standard brush. Put some nice radius. Let's hide everything else. Okay, I'm gonna bring the face back. Now all that I'm gonna do is just go over a stitch. You can see how that adds some nice indenting. I think we can make that a little bit bigger, maybe eight. Again, not using any fancy brushes. I think for this it will be a little bit easy to maybe use a more proper brush. So you also get like a rounded thingy here. Honestly, I just like to do it like this. Just 
it's gonna take a little bit of time but it is an important step to do as you can see we get uh, but there's a stitch we don't really get a line which is fine so that's just gonna make it look uh, like there's a little bit of tension so don't worry about that I'm gonna go through the painful process of doing this everywhere It's a very little step to do, but I think it's very important. After we're done, I'll show you the before and after, you can see how much it adds. If you see a stitch line that doesn't go nicely, to adjust it. Because after putting these lines, it's pretty much the final, like this, where our stitches are and will be. Because <coughs> changing the position afterwards is going to be a pain. more towards the instead of the middle, so if you get too close to the edge, it's going to be pretty difficult. And there's a little bit of a painful thing to do to all your stitches. Like, uh, I know some people like to do their stitches with alphas instead, like they don't use insert brushes. They just use alphas to put them in. But I think I prefer to just do them with the uh, insert brushes. So we can put them in more fast, like I told you. We can just have that edge and generate stitches on that. And then they'll all have a nice even distance to the edge. So I think that's one of the biggest advantages. And then the other one is... Uh, If we do this with an uh, alpha, we're not going to be able to give this the, the stitches a different color in the ID map. So then to, to texture the stitches, we're solely going to have to rely on getting it from the curvature map, which is going to be a little bit less precise. So you can get a little bit of a nicer result in the textures, in my opinion, if you can actually get your stitches in the ID map itself. So we can make this blue and then this red. The way we can select the actual stitches in our ID map. It's going to give a really nice result in the textures. Also imagine if we do the bake and we find out all the stitches are too small. It's it's a pain to redo it if you did with alphas. Since now we can just delete the stitches really easily. It's, it's pretty nice. And then we can generate them again, which doesn't take too long. But let's say they're all too small. If you then need to redraw everything with the alpha, that's going to be a pain. If we now need to redo them, we already have all the detail in place. So we just need to generate new stitches, which is a lot easier and faster. So that's uh, why I think it's better to do them with actual geometry. And also looks pretty nice, in my opinion, with geometry. Makes the scope look a little bit more clean. And 
and this part isn't too bad, it just takes a little bit of time, which can be annoying. If you have like a little weird spot with this, we can just smooth it out with direction and redraw it a little bit. Doesn't need to be perfect, remember what I keep saying. Imperfections make it look more real. line twice a little bit of a different strength won't be noticeable the only important parts that we get some impact of the stitches on the surface now that we're halfway I'm gonna do a quick little turn off you can see how that just adds that nice little extra punch and we can even increase it I think that looks a little bit nicer you can see that adds a lot of detail I think it's a little bit too strong though the 1.5 but we also gotta go over with standard to Give this some more shape and then we'll really start to come in nicely. I think this already look looking great. So let's continue editing a little bit. over a little bit still a little too close to the edge and sometimes when your zbrush is slow because the files getting bigger it's nice if you want to rotate to just go into solo mode and to pop out when you need to. At this point like if I make a small adjustment to the view I won't go into solo mode. But if I want to like all the way navigate to here most of the times I just pop in solo mode real quick and go there. I have my solo mode set to caps lock, so it's always at my fingers. So it's just like rotating with anything, you're constantly pressing Ctrl and Alt to navigate. I'm just adding caps lock to pop into solo and out of solo. Also pop out and in to check if I already set the line sometimes.
a little bit close to the edge, but I think it's okay. Mm. Let's move this out a little bit more. Just like a, a basic rule of design for anything. 3D uh, UI design, never make stuff too close to the edge. You want some breathing space. By having that little breathing space, we're also gonna get some breakup for free. Because right now, if I were to look at the textures this is gonna have as well, then here it'd be a shiny texture, rough texture, shiny, rough, shiny, rough. Which is gonna be nice in the contrast and the breakup of the roughness channel. Keep it, I don't want to readjust this. We're almost true. So the last little bit. Let's see if we did all. looks like we have a line everywhere except for here so now we get the difference you can see that that's quite a lot of depth to the model So let's move to step two, taking the standard brush, put intensity high, lazy radius, maybe size of six. Now we just gotta go everywhere where there's like that stitch, we go over it. Actually, I'm gonna go back a little bit. I want to really over exaggerate this effect so we can see where we already passed and where we didn't. And then we can easily tone the layer down. I want to be really clear what we already passed. If you put us morph target, you can seamlessly continue sometimes so it's worth just trying I'm gonna skip that one because I feel like this one should be less strong maybe let's skip that one as well for now let's just do the our word pieces and then we do the next one on a different layer so we get a little bit more control some more control we have a look at that you want to try to do this with a pretty even pressure on the tablet see how nice it's to look Now instead of the leather just looking like flat panels, it's actually gonna get some depth to them and some interesting stuff is gonna happen. As you can see this looks way more interesting.
If you get an ugly thing like this, just go over it with a smooth direction. That should fix most of it. Look at that nice detail that we're getting. I think it's one of the most underlooked and important parts of making nice assets for characters. It's the tension on the stitches. Unevenness is just gonna add some nice breakup to it, so don't worry about that. It doesn't need to be all even and perfect. would be a pain if you use all fast and you have to redo it. This one's pretty close to the edge, so we can push it out a little bit like this. Yeah, definitely put that too close. be a little lazy. It's also important sometimes when you're working on a model you know it's like a, a little mistake you don't have to be a, too much of a perfectionist to get everything just right because that's just gonna take all the fun out of 3d you also have to make progress and actually finish the model. It's more important than fixing every small little thing and getting burnt out on the project than just starting a new one. It's also something, uh, instead of doing full characters, I like to do little parts of characters like uh, for example, I saw this 3D model of a helmet and I thought that'd be cool to do. Instead of doing the whole character, I'm just going to do the helmet to keep the project more small and I'm done with it faster and I can move on and the way it keeps being fun for me. And then usually I have like one big character project, full character that I'm working on besides the smaller projects. So I think we we added this to every part. So I'm gonna make a new one. And then in this one, we're just gonna do the ones in between a double stitch. Again, don't do it all in the same layer, so you can change the intensities differently from each other. Easily smooth those little bumps up by smooth direction. Smooth into that direction. As you can see this looks weird, smooth direction. 
that looks fine. Looking weird, what direction, looks fine. See that that's a nice little bit of detail. Now lastly we can make another layer. See if we want to add some strength on the other side of the stitch as well. So I think I'll do it, but this one's gonna be low way the, the light intensity probably. Also, if you're in a more limited time range, uh, definitely skip this one. It's the last, least important one. Let's take a look before we put all of that in. It's worth it. Yeah, I do like the design. It's gonna be way more sloppy on this layer though, as the intensity is gonna be less strong, so less, less noticeable if we make mistakes. Trying to average this out more. I think that's nope. It's a little bit more. I think after this one on both sides, we passed all the tension. Can add a little bit here. Two consolidate.
looking at this I made a mistake I didn't think far enough ahead so when we were doing the top layer and I was doing the thickness I didn't compensate for the extra thickness that I'm gonna add with the standard so now all the top layers are a little bit too thick to my liking so the way you can fix that is to move that down a little bit or you can just ignore it and lift with it but when you're making that you should be thinking oh hey i'm gonna put a standard next to the stitch which is gonna kind of inflate it so you gotta be careful with that but we do also still gonna mess with the lay intensity and we got one more And that's all. So the first thing I wish to do is go to this layer. You see we turn it down. So now it's just adding a little bit. Which I think adds a nice little touch. Then we can also do something like that to add even a little bit more effect. So I think that looks nice, but I'm not going to do that for all. <laughs> and I will do it for all. This should be really fast and carefree. Just taking away some volume. And smoothing that out on a low subdivision. Now I know this seems kind of like a vague thing to do, but it's just a nice way to add some extra detailing. And because here we up the surface, we should be dipping it down as well here. To make it balanced. Then just blending it out so we don't get a bit of transition. And honestly, I think I spend more time on actually detailing the tension of stitches than the actual leather details itself, like the cracks and whatever. But I think this just adds a lot of nice touch and you cannot really do this in Substance Painter. Like when we do the textures we can add more detail to it in Substance Painter easily for the cracks of the leather and all that. But the actual stitch tension is pretty hard to, to add in textures later on. And just makes your sculpt so much nicer to have that nice tension. You can see how carefree I'm being with this part, just going over it really quick. Again, the less visible something is, the, the less time you want to be spending on it, obviously. Makes me a big action. Again, it's important that we do this one on a low subdivision so we can smooth it in easily. Like blending stuff in on dense meshes goes really hard. You can blend it more certain spots than others to add some breakup.
and just using the smooth direction to get a little bit more control over the directionality of my smoothing. Don't worry too much if you smooth some of the work out that we did. Because we are on a low subdivision, it's gonna come back a little bit when we subdivide it again to the high one. Actually really fast and messy. And in the end we're gonna merge all these tension lays together and we can toggle them and you can really see how much that's once we have everything together add a little bit of a break up in the tension there Everything that should have tension in real life should be having tension in your skull. That's how it's going to look more realistic and like it's not uh, just floating on top. Just by adding tension and indenting the underlying surface, the underlying surface is going to add a lot. As you can see, this looks a lot more realistic than this. I think that's all. Awesome. One piece we already did it. Can add some variation in there. So you can see that adds quite a lot of interesting stuff to our model. Let's take a look at the laser. That was fine. It was quite strong, maybe a 0 0.8. 0 0.6. together so maybe I want to adjust this again later so safe. let me go ahead and uh, unhide everything so now if we save our perspective sign a single I think this works fine. Let's go ahead and hide all the lace. So this was the before when it felt a bit lackless. Just by adding that one lay we already get a lot more depth. This kind of the lays of importance, like the first one's the most important, blah blah. So the less time you have, mm, you can skip the lay delays. So you can see the more lays we add, the more tension the stitches start to feel. And then we have the before and after. Take a look from here, I'm not liking that folding. I think now it's also a good part to start reviewing the fabric details. I'm not sure if we have any. Nope. So let's set them up. Let's get a tiny letter, 
del foro. You can mess with color blending, but you don't have to. Good way to preview the actual color blend is to disable strength. Looking for one that I like to kind of resemble leather. Actually, let's use a fashion first. <laughs> this is like a really rough one. I feel. Actually, yeah. Actually, it's just like a little bit. I think it's called. Of course, of course, this is very optional. That sometimes can help to visualize the materials in ZBrush. They don't want to be spending too much time on this. Now for this one, maybe uh, Flynn. I think that's a good one. I think the lab looks too bad at this point. Coming pretty nice. That's strange. Why is not feeling that happen? Go on. So now I can also show you like the nice breakup that we have in between a rough material and a shiny material, which adds a lot. In my opinion, like if you didn't have this extra layer, it'd be way more boring looking. Now, because this is gonna be a pretty worn leather and this became pretty thick, you can also just go here, just disable the surface. So we can come here, maybe a stronger one, just something like this. We can mess with those edges. Don't have to do this for everyone. I like to just add it on some. gonna add some breakup. The front's gonna be the most visible so I should add more stuff here. More tension. That's the problem when it becomes too thick. Like it starts to look a little bit more stylized. If I take this now here and Move this down. A little bit more realistic. I really don't feel like messing with that now. So we're just gonna leave it as this. So now I'm just looking at the overall model. I'm trying to spot where do I think the the details are lacking, like the most. That would 100% <laughs> without a doubt be this little block out piece that we still have yet to be modeled. I really don't feel like doing that now. I 
want to add a little bit more folds here and there. So I think this piece needs more breakup. So it's pretty boring looking. Try to avoid doing it one by we did all the tension work. So we'll push the stuff through the stitches. Then you have to readjust the stitches again. Kinda going for a zigzag pattern here. if I like the changes. Yeah, I feel like it's just becoming noisy. Let's delete it. I think we're gonna have to put some work into the block out thingy here. Actually, we can avoid it for a little bit longer. You can also clean this up with an extra subdivision. Let's see what's the lace. Go ahead and merge this down and decide what looks better. This looks more realistic, more detail. not add a whole lot to this just a little bit of polish here yeah, this is super sharp that yeah, it should be more thick the folds more rounded Which is a little bit of an inflate. That's the question. Yeah, I do like to go back in history to see changes. It's a little bit different. It's gonna be time to take this little guy out of block out. So if you remember we center and put this in the middle. Just have this as a size reference. Let me show you what we're making. So we should start with a cylinder. Make sure we're using four sides for a multiplication of four. Let's move this up. It's gonna be a screw. And we have the shape which is one, two, three, four, five, six, and eight. Another cylinder with eight. Maybe seven. Let's just go with 8. I think it's 8 and doesn't really matter. 
Uh, my light is being slow. Got like a weird rounded thing you can duplicate. Not going to talk too much during this part, it's really, it's really easy and boring. Just model the shapes that you see. I have no idea what I'm modeling, by the way. So don't worry about making some details like this perfect. You just need some interesting looking shapes to fill it up. Nobody's gonna know what it actually is. There's a little gap here that I'm gonna avoid to make the low poly easier. And maybe I'll actually add this one or add it give the low poly a bit more depth but anytime you are adding a gap you're gonna make it more difficult for yourself that's something to remember One thing that's important that you add this little thing on the front because we already decided where the front's gonna be because we added more detail there. And get this as perpendicular as I can. is to hard edges. No, let's just let those. And that's it. At three segments. Now you can see this is really strong, the, the edge. So one thing that you can do is export this zebras. Dynamesh on the highest resolution possible. Duplicate. That's easy mesh. Try to do settings. Should do a little bit of a better job at hard surface. Let's keep that open. 
this as one okay? Let's just use this one. Then we can project and subdivide and project. Now you can see we get a pretty nice looking surface. Instead of being so harsh, we have a nice little soft baffle on it. We also had that issue with the topology on the side. With that triangle, as you can see. We can just move that out the direction brush. Now we have a pretty nice one there. I'm gonna keep this in here for now. And let's see. I think we should make it longer, it's annoying. So we can do something like this. Just move that up a little bit. Just move that. Also, let's put this out. Sometimes if you duplicate, it doesn't import on the right place, so be careful. I think this one should be bigger. Something like that. Let's like a, that effect. We're not gonna make it twirl. Uh, nobody's gonna notice. It doesn't twirl. It's a connect tool. Something like that. Bevel. This is a little annoying. I'm sure there's a script out there somewhere to do this, but I don't have it. So let's troop this. Just like that, we have some detail here. To do this, let's go ahead and make some poly groups. to group so now that we have polygroups like that we can go to C plugin polygroups and right Now if we go to the surface, noise, UV, nice plugin. I think I crashed my ZBrush, great. Actually I had on the on the screen, so great. Now let's uh, uh, let's search for like a diamond thingy. Then we can try skills. Or hex styles. Hex styles. It's not exactly what I want. I think it's not something like that. Double plugin skill. Never did it right. Let's 
to zero. Why is my song? Zero. Little bit small. Something like that looks okay. Can also try putting it on 3D. Now that's gonna be worse for sure. It's a little imperfect, but I think it's okay. I'm just gonna mask by noise. And the reason why I'm masking by noise is that we then get a chance to kinda clean the still up. Go in dynamic mode off. Dynamic is just uh, how big the scale is, depends on your scene. Now it just depends on how far you zoomed in. We can kind of fix up that UVs here. I'm really just going to fix that seam up here. Go for like an average between the two. That's a more stuck layer. Let's inflate that. Then do like polish. Another polish. Then one more polish. Edit the intensity. I think the polish is messed it up for the ones over there with the lower poly count. Let's do it like that. Let's invert this. I try to grow that selection. Let's inflate this. So we have some nice space as well. Now with the move brush we can kind of edit this as well. First let's go here. Take this, we can grow this mask out. You only want to switch if you need your brush to be smaller, otherwise, you shouldn't really smash. Switch now, we can smooth that out. Now, we get a pretty nice looking detailed thing. It isn't perfect at all if we zoom in, especially. It's definitely good enough for what it needs to be. Just want to get some detail in there. It's being really annoying. Let's go search edit. That looks like a pretty nice little detailed piece. Definitely serves its purpose. So let's see, two subdivisions, three. Can we drop one? Definitely can. Ah, let's just subdivide this one. Again. One more time, it's not gonna add too much. Delete that low one so this one keeps high rest enough. 
Not much on. Um, as annoying as this is, I definitely want to get the low poly done already because now it's in the center, which makes the whole lot easier. So export. Import. Now we can just take a cylinder. Let's give it 16 sides. Anywhere where we have like a different thingy with a cut. No, it's good. You can see how easy this is when we have it in the center. You can see we have a nice looking low poly. We do need to bring that tilt back. So we can just take this to face. Try to get this as close as you can. So need to be perfect against small detail. Shift, right click, chamfer. Now you can see that hole that we made here. Just cut. Okay, connect. Connect. Let's select all for the last ones. Component, move this in. Let's select this. And then we'll eventually make the hard edge. Same here, same here, and same here. Actually, this one should be soft. We can make a this machine that we do this. Get rid of this one. That matches up to here. That's how we can kind of cheaply like, put holes in it, and it's not gonna be too much of a pain to bake down. You can see we have now an actual gap in the geometry. That's the last part. Let's make this delete. Delete. And just fill all. Let's go ahead and try to get the poly count as low as we can here. Set up all the hard edges and UVs laid on. Now you can see how easy that was to retop a pretty difficult looking piece. If we just take the right planning, it'll be easy. Like if this was like all messed up the rotation from the beginning, it would have been so much more difficult. Now that we have this, we can select both, export. ZBrush, and let's import into this one. Cancel. Delete high. Now 
now all that's left is placing the final piece out of the block out into the model. Like modeling out little pieces like this is really gonna add a lot of detail to your model. Okay, like this. I do want to be sure that I'm actually seeing the gap that we have. Put that front. Shouldn't pay more attention to things on that technology side. Should probably put it here. Try to put it in the center. So that looks nice to me. Now let's fix that in section. We want to show this all the way in. Now we can fix it in the Just move this out a little bit. Be a little bit longer. So this one, you don't well. Now let's go here. Can I match up that low poly close? And I think we should place it a little bit low. Should be like going here. Also hide the transition and clipping from lower to I think it's a nice question. So if you remember, we did uh, it took quite a long time ago, but we should kind of fix that up now and connect it to this piece. So we can export this. And now in Maya, we're gonna import. Go ahead and rotate it. I'm also going to use a standard material. Make it a bit small, maybe. The best way to select something like this really fast, you could go like this, holding a shift, or you can do this and do faces. See. Go to the right view. Try to get as perpendicular as I can. Something like this, maybe. Need to connect this. So, uh, 24. I think we should subdivide this once. Annoying. So we don't have the same segments here. I'm go back a little bit. Let's see, 12, 6. So you should get this to 12 on the first one. Hmm. We can get it to 24. I think that will be easy, maybe. So I think the way we can do this, we put some extra in. Then we just edge flow it out. Pretty careful with this though.
trying to make them all as even as I can. I think that still looks pretty nice and rounded. So let's try connecting them. the closest to the other edges. So what we can do is we can go here, edge flow, so now that we put new edges everywhere, disable history recording so we can keep it fast, and delete the history. Go off and edit this one more time. As you can see, make them all nice and even. And I love this feature I used all the time. I think it's one of the best features, this, in my opinion. 